Hello, my name is Manny Morales. Recently I applied the logic code used in the no-go experiment to the numerous Wuhan datasets and found an exact matching correlation. As such, the host virus interaction protein binding dataset could hold the key to finding the COVID-19 virus via a vaccine or drug treatments. I have forwarded this information to the World Health Organization for review. How I arrived at this discovery is explained in this presentation. In retrospect, this discovery began with the events leading up to the following News 12 interview. Around New Jersey, around the clock. This is News 12 New Jersey. And we thank you for being with us. I'm Len Turner, Giants fans gearing up for the Super Bowl showdown against the unbeaten New England Patriots. Big Blue supporters all over the world now pulling out all the stops. News 12 New Jersey, Sean Bergen tells us why one local artist believes the Giants are destined for victory. He has our top story this half hour. Giants fans who've passed this East Rutherford billboard may not know that it could be the key to a Super Bowl victory. Manuel Morales is a Mount Laurel artist who has twice painted billboards like this one that he says have led to Super Bowl championships for Big Blue. Each time that I do this, the New York Giants go on to win the Super Bowl. A two for two record, that so far that's what we've had. So uh, back in Super Bowl 21 was the first Super Bowl and then Super Bowl 25 was the second uh, Super Bowl painting that I did. Morales says the Giants organization politely turned him down for his third painting so he developed his own website called tempdestiny.com. NFL fans of every stripe could vote for their team to be the recipient of his artwork, and Giants fans won out with 176,000 votes. From their votes, they actually commissioned me to do this for their team. Morales says that John Barrera of Rutherford was the guy who really galvanized Giants fans worldwide in the online campaign. I felt that this would be a good gift, basically, for fans to give the team before they went to the Super Bowl. This billboard. Yes. To really let the team know that Giants fans were behind them. Exactly. Yeah. What, what better way to say it than a huge billboard on the turnpike? If there's one thing New Jersey loves, it's an underdog. And when these scrappy Giants take to the field against the undefeated Patriots tomorrow, they'll be looking for an upset. In East Rutherford, Sean Bergen, News 12, New Jersey. Uh, Manuel Morales says he'll put the finishing touches on the artwork by painting the football silver just as soon as the Giants win. We've all got... You are probably wondering, what the heck does art, football, and voting have anything to do with physics, let alone with helping to find Albert Einstein's non-local hidden variables? As I will explain in this presentation, there are two first-order logic codes that the human mind uses to perceive the outside world. The first-order logic code that I use in physics, and in science in general, is exhibited above the x-axiom of the graph. The first logic code I used to conduct the no-go experiment is exhibited below the x-axiom. In this presentation, you will be able to confirm for yourself which logic code is of the first order. In order to understand the empirical evidence of the no-go experiment, I needed to come to terms with the pivotal question. How do we know what we think we know? I realized I needed to understand the logic involved with how the human mind makes sense of the natural world via external sensory input. As understood, determinism, otherwise known as superdeterminism, is the metaphysical belief that causality is predetermined, which in turn precludes free will. However, with the advent of randomness of quantum mechanics, the notion of absolute cause has been compromised, if not made invalid altogether. Therefore, it is necessary to come to terms with the logic code the human mind uses to make sense of the outside world. To do so, I found that I simply needed to look at how we express such logic via word order topology. In other words, how we think is how we speak. Did you know that the human mind uses two mutually exclusive contradictory first order logic codes to interpret sensory input from the outside world? first order, something from something, and first order, something from nothing. This means that it is possible that the quantum measurement problem of how a wave function 
collapse occurs, what Albert Einstein coined as spooky actions at a distance, may not be a measurement problem, but a fundamental problem with the logic used to conduct science since there are two mutually exclusive logic codes at play. In linguistics, word order topology expresses two mutually exclusive, contradictory first order logic codes. One logic code consists of effects of existence expressed as subject or object as first order functions, what I call EC logic, something from something. One logic code consists of motion expressed as a verb as a first order function, what I call CE logic, something from nothing. Eighty-five percent of human language place verb as a second order or third order function, i.e. EC logic. As a layman, I did not understand why there was such a thing as scientific consensus. After all, I assumed that empirical evidence is supposed to be about facts, not opinions. As the pie chart illustrates, there is plenty of room for speculation given the diversity of the logic codes the human mind uses to interpret physical reality. Existence as a first order function hides the first order functions of motion by placing motion as an effect of existence or in between effects of existence. As exhibited in the first column, the dominant first order functions of EC logic hides the first order functions of motion by placing motion as an effect between or after effects of existence. In other words, EC logic dictates that effects of existence cause motion, and thus the assumption is that existence is causal. As exhibited, EC logic hides motion as a first order function. Therefore, existence has no origin other than itself. Thus, effects of existence such as energy and mass are equivalent and thus conserved. As exhibited in the first column, the dominant first order function of EC logic hides the first order functions of motion by placing motion as an effect between or after effects of existence. With the fact that 85% of the human languages negates motion as a first order function, it is easy to understand why CE logic is hidden and subsequently not accounted for. This is how local cause of existence hides non-local cause of existence. To recap, a first order function is understood as a local or non-local mechanism that precedes thus cause the effects that follow. As such, determinism is a phenomenon that is either local, in that effects of existence are of the first order, thus causal all the effects that follow, something from something, EC logic, or non-local, in that motion is of the first order, thus causal of the effects that follow, something from nothing, CE logic. In order to discuss absolute determinism, otherwise known as superdeterminism, it is necessary to empirically establish which logic code obtains absolute internal and external validity. Apparently, the human mind has a paradox issue with first order, since there cannot be two first order functions. This paradox blinds what is causal and what is not. In simplistic terms, EC logic is the logic of something from something. A popular illustration of this logic is the light cone used to convey the causal structure of the existence of light in space-time. This is how determinism using EC logic is understood. Existence begets existence. This self-causal logic has an origin loophole in that it lacks the mechanisms that cause existence. This is where we get the logic that energy is not created because it is constant, thus conserved. So we have here past effects, causing present effects, causing future effects. Or past existence, causing present existence, causing future existence. Problem here is, how are effects caused? No answer to that. Or how is existence caused? Still no answer. 
As previously mentioned, football fans from all over the internet voted to support their favorite team, which served as the motion event. However, the potential for the team chosen also needed to participate in the Super Bowl as done twice before. This means that the construct of the selection consists of two mutually exclusive parts that are necessary for the function of selection to come to exist. This is what makes the experiment a no-go experiment in that it recognizes the functions of motion, direct and indirect selection, as first order gateway mechanisms that are necessary to obtain effects of existence. One go event out of 12 attempts. And so we can see how cause with the selection event, when it finally took place, created the effect of the experiment. No selection, no experiment. The experiment obtained 11 successful no-go attempts, verifying that the functions of selection does not pre-exist. As such, it can only come to exist. The empirical evidence confirms that the functions of motion are of the first order, thus necessary to obtain the effects of existence that follow. In other words, no selection, no experiment. This means that no-go theorems based on counterfactual definiteness are negated because it is impossible to obtain definite counterfactual effects prior to a selection event, which can only come to exist. In the last three years of the no-go experiment, if a direct selection did not take place, then the delayed choice would be if one of the two competing Super Bowl teams had more votes than the other. The indirect selection event occurred three out of three times. Thus meant that cause and effect took place. If both Super Bowl teams had the same vote totals, then the motion event would have been canceled out. In the tenth year of the experiment, two teams came close to simultaneously having the most votes. Although this event did not take place during the program, this possibility had been accounted for, thus ruling out any plausible alternative explanations. Therefore, no cause, no experiment. And once again, no-go theorems based on counterfactual definiteness are negated because it is impossible to obtain definite counterfactual effects prior to a selection event which can only come to exist. As practiced in current scientific studies, EC logic uses effects of existence as sufficient cause. However, the no-go experiment confirms that indirect selection events hide direct selection events. Therefore, the exclusive use of indirect selection to conduct experiments such as the LH LHC, Large Hadron Collider, or the LIGO, experiments are guaranteed to obtain false positive results because they use indirect selection. To address this issue, it is necessary to conduct both direct and indirect selection experiments in order to avoid false conclusions. The unambiguous empirical evidence confirm the functions of motion can only come to exist, therefore they cannot pre-exist locally. Accordingly, motion is the non-local domain that gives rise to the local domain of existence. CE logic obtains absolute internal-external validity, therefore it is a necessary first-order logic. And finally, effects of existence are absolutely determined by how they come to exist. Thus, superdeterminism, i.e. absolute determinism, is empirically confirmed. As originally suspected, the quantum measurement problem is a logic problem, not a measurement problem. The acts of measuring or observing is a function of motion. However, if you use the logic of local existence as a sufficient cause via EC logic, then effects are causal of effects instead of motion. This situation creates a paradox of the first order. As empirically confirmed, effects of existence are objects of motion. 
As such, the phenomenon of wave-particle duality corresponds with a single potential function, such as a particle, and with multiple potential functions, such as a wave function. In essence, wave-particle duality reflects the dual functions of motion. Both constituents are mutually exclusive, yet both are of the same source. As illustrated in the double slit experiment below, motion paired with a single potential or motion paired with multiple potentials will always generate two mutually exclusive effects. Wave particle duality is potential dependent, not object dependent, since both effects are determined by motion. If my findings are not absolute or are just a theory, there is a way to safely contest the empirical evidence via a simple logic test. Note, since this experiment is based on reality and not on conjecture, it is not recommended to conduct the experiment in real life. The experiment is as follows. You wake up one morning and find yourself completely paralyzed. This means that you cannot directly select to talk, eat food, drink fluids, go to the bathroom, etc nor can anyone else indirectly select for you. This means that your existence is completely void of the functions of selection, that up until now you probably assumed selection was nothing more than something your brain does, not something your body needs for its existence. If you are a scientist, this also means you are prohibited to directly or indirectly conduct a single experiment in order to test your theories. This absence of free will is the super-deterministic loophole that invalidates no-go theorems based on counterfactual definiteness. The test is, can you continue your physical existence without the first-order functions of selection? Of course not. This means that your existence confirms the external validity of the no-go experiment such that without the first order functions of selection, your existence would be a no-go. By reconfiguring the axiom of pairing to coincide with the evidence, I was able to understand how nature obtains something from nothing. As empirically confirmed, direct selection and indirect selection are fundamental events of attraction that can only come to exist. In a physical sense, this phenomenon is otherwise known as gravity. However, since there are two complementary attraction functions, one being strong, thus certain, and one being weak, thus uncertain, they create the effects of what I call left and right angular momentum. Albert Einstein's famous equation of E equals FC squared is based on EC logic, which has proven to be incomplete. If we include the two first-order attraction functions of gravity, causing the effects of energy, we then have a complete system of both motion and its effects in their proper order, thus the equation of E equals gravity squared. Word-order topology has revealed who are the first-order thinkers, who are second-order thinkers, and who can think both ways. The question is, which group of thinkers are you in, and will you help to advance science in accordance with how the natural world works?